kids. Welcome to Bible Basics. Today we are going to be making a dream catcher. Dream catchers in my study have been used to ward off bad dreams as well as bring in good dreams. Uh, Joseph was an interpreter of dreams and you'll see more when you watch the story. Hope you have fun. Okay kids, let's see what is in our bag today to make our dream catcher. Miss Chris and her paper plates. Every time I turn around, she's got paper plates in my bag. There's more paper plates. And your paintbrush. Let's see. And yarn and twine. And paint. Oops. Beads and feathers and popsicle sticks. And tape. Give me just a minute and we'll get everything together and get started. Okay kids, so first we're going to paint the base of our dream catcher. And the first thing I did is I shook my paint up and yours have got lids on there like little uh, caps so that way it doesn't um, make a mess. Okay. So I'm gonna take and dump some of the brown paint out or whatever color you've got. You've got two colors as well. And then get a little bit of paint and start painting. So this is, now if you wanna do it different, that is perfectly fine. But what I've done with, our, with mine is go back and forth between the two colors. And so I use the um, holes that are punched to kind of be a guide for that. Okay, so then I'm gonna skip to the next one. Okay, give me just a couple of minutes. I'll get this all the brown on there and then we'll get started on the next color. Okay, so we've got the brown on there and this, some of you may have this size, one of them, and some of you may have uh, two of this size and this paint is thicker than the other paint. So, of course, make sure you shake it up and this is why the popsicle sticks are in here you have something to get it out of the thing with. Okay, so that's probably enough for right now. If we need some more, I'll get some more out. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here. I'm not the best painter, but once we get all the other stuff on our dream catcher, it won't be standing out so bad. So. Okay. And when we get this done, we'll have to let it dry before we get started. And I, I think I let mine dry overnight. I don't know that it would actually take that much, that long to let it dry, but. Okay. So. Give me just a second and I'll get the rest of this painted and we'll get started on the next thing. Ta-da! Now it's all dry and we can safely um, add all of our stuff to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is weave the center where it catches the dream. Okay, now 
Normally I do this part for you guys, but I wanted to show you all how to do this. It's real easy. So I'm gonna put uh, tape on the end of the yarn. So that way, when I'm trying to get it to go through, it'll be easier instead of fighting the, as it frays. So all you gotta do is just put it down and then wrap it around. Oops. Okay. Okay, so now. Okay, so after you wrap the tape around it, then you're gonna cut it like at an angle. So that way it's got a point on it. Okay, so after you get your um, yarn ready to be pushed through, then you're gonna tape the other end down to the plate, the back of the plate. And then you will start weaving the inside of your So then, I wouldn't go straight across. I would go at, instead of going straight across right here, I would go at an angle. And the further into this you get, the easier it is as far as the length of your string here. There we go. Okay, and then, okay, so then I'm gonna go at another angle up here and push it through the back. So give me just a minute and I'll get a little bit of this done. Okay, so after I've gone through each one of the blue holes, then I start with the brown holes. And I keep on going until I've got all of my yarn. It's supposed to look like a spider web kind of. Um, until I get all of my yarn. And I may have to double a couple here to just make sure that it looks good and filled in like this. I went down there and go up through there. Okay, let's see. And then go down through there. Give me just a few minutes and I'll have this part finished and you can see what the finished part looks like. So we're getting about to the end of the yarn and as you can tell, it's getting more filled in and I've had to go up through a couple of the holes more than once. So I'm gonna keep, keep going until I get all the way to the end of it. Oh, look at there. think this one might be the last one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so then I'm going to take the remainder and tape it down. Okay. And you see these three holes down here that are on the outside? I meant to tell you this earlier, but the, um, the feathers and the beads that hang down actually go through those. So when you're weaving the inside, you do not use these three holes. Okay, so now I'm going to get the blue thread out or whatever color I gave you that's the uh, shorter of the three. And, let's see. Okay, 
So suck that through that hole. I'm gonna tape it down to the back. So that's the longest one and if your strings end up being a little too long you can always cut cut it down a little bit okay not sure which one is the okay so I'm gonna put the second one through oops nope I have to put it through to the back because you're taping it on the back. Okay, so I got that one through. I'm gonna tape it. And on the on these strings, you want one to be the longest and then a little bit shorter and then a little bit shorter. At least that's how I did it. Okay. So you're gonna put the last piece of string or yarn through there. Tape that one. Okay, so you've got your yarn through there. Uh, let's see, this one's longer. This one, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut this one down even further. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna cut a little tiny bit of that one. Okay, so that should be, okay. So you've got the longer one and then the next longest one and then the next one. So then I'm gonna start putting my beads on, but I'm gonna tape the end of my string so that way it'll be easier for me to put it through, the beads through it. Okay, so now you've got one paper, small paper plate left and that one is to put your beads on so that way they don't go rolling all over the table and into the floor. Okay, so, and you can do this part however you want to, except for you have to make sure that it is skinny enough to go through it. So, let's see if that'll work now. Okay. So I'm gonna just swap back and forth between the three colors. And then when I get through with one, then I'll show you how to finish it out. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got all the beads on the first string, and then I am going to put our, the first one of our feathers on there. So I've got to tape the feather on there. Then we're gonna, I'll show you a trick to hide the tape. Okay, so I put the tape around the tail of the feather and also around the yarn. Then I'm going to slide the beads. Oops, not that far. I'm gonna slide the beads down around it. And then that way, you won't be able to see the tape that I put on there. Okay. So there's the first one. And then I'm gonna do these other two and show you the final product. So now we have the inside of the Dreamcatcher done. We've got the three little decorative tails and now the only thing that we've got left to do now is to put something to hang it on with so okay so I'm going to take one end of this and put it through the 
and you want to make sure you kind of get it towards the top and get it centered. Um, let's see. And you may have, may have given you too much of it. Hold on one second. You may have to cut some of the twine back after you get it tied, but I wanted to make sure you had enough to tie. Okay. Okay, so this is our finished dream catcher and I hope you enjoyed this craft and I hope it helps you to have sweet dreams. Hopefully to see you in a couple of weeks.